We've been talking about the rise of Bitcoin, but Thursday's action was out of this world. I mean, the thing was on a one-way rocket. What is going on here? It really is, to put it mildly, just insane right now, Maggie, because you have all of this fervor about Bitcoin because the price has continued to go higher for the most part, even though it's been extremely volatile. And I think that's attracted a lot of average investors who start wondering, hey, the stock market is doing okay, but I can't make money that quickly off of a company even like Apple or Google, so why not throw money into Bitcoin? And that's, of course, incredibly risky. But the more that the price goes up, the more that people think it, it'll never go down. And we've lived through many bubbles like that before, and they don't often end well. That's right. And, and, and I watched nightly newscasts about a father who's paying for his daughter's wedding. Jose, this gets me incredibly nervous because there are risks. And one of the things that we talk about, worry about, are the thefts we continue to see from the exchanges. I know that you watch that part of the world that, that isn't obvious to the rest of us all the time. Any sign that that's gonna stop once this is no. more widely accepted or trading on exchanges? No. Uh, no, not at all, and here's why. Let's talk about what Bitcoin is and what it's not. It is a technology experiment, okay? About eight or nine years ago, it launched as an experiment in independent money non-government money and for years it was used by the tech community as such but what we see right now is this huge public interest in something that frankly most people don't understand and here's the thing the way bitcoin works it's a it's a highly technical experiment if you own a bitcoin you have a private key that controls it if you lose that key like forgetting your password if you've ever forgotten your password Bitcoin might not be for you because you'll lose whatever you invested. You'll lose that Bitcoin, that money. And that's what hackers go after. They go after these private keys. That means that if you get hacked, they'll steal your Bitcoin. If you let the exchange where you bought it at keep your private key, hackers can go after that exchange to steal it. And let's talk about how many exchanges have been hit here. I just pulled up a list of exchanges that have been hacked. And this is just a portion of that list. Exchanges like NiceHash, Tether, Coindash, Zcoin, Bitfinex, and the giant debacle that was Mt. Gox back in 2014 that lost $450 million worth of Bitcoins, which at today's prices would be worth something like $12 billion. That sounds like right. insanity. Can you imagine a company yeah. losing $12 billion of its cost of money? And and there's not necessarily any recourse or, or anywhere to go where it doesn't operate. No. This is what happens when it's not regulated. Paul, this brings us to the point of the exchanges getting involved. I think this has given it, whether intended or not, a credibility, a feeling like maybe it is going to be like another asset, which, by the way, not clear at all. And we will be talking to the exchanges as they launch, uh, including on Monday, about how they feel about that. But this could increase volatility. We, I'm hearing for some people, oh, it's going to go even higher because now it's going to be widely accepted. But I also hear now people are going to get a chance to short it. And you might see that volatility on the downside. We don't know how this is going to play out, do we? There could be several unintended consequences, Maggie, to the legitimacy of Bitcoin that will come about because of the CME, the CBOE, the NASDAQ looking at futures as well. And to Jose's point, there's also going to be increased efforts, I think, by hackers to try and steal Bitcoin because of that legitimacy. Remember a long time ago in, in tech land when Apple was a distant second to Microsoft in terms of an operating system and people praised Apple for having great uh, security. No one would ever hack Apple. And that was because you didn't hack the thing that was in second place or third place. People started looking to hack iOS and other Apple platforms once Apple became dominant. And I think you're going to see the same thing here with Bitcoin. The increased legitimacy is going to unfortunately have more bad actors trying to steal Bitcoin. Yeah, and Jose, I know, I'm sure you agree with that. Do we need more transparency? When I said the part of the world you watch, you look at what's happening on the, on the dark web, the parts that we don't look at. There doesn't, we don't even know who created this. There doesn't seem to be a lot of accountability here, even in a non-governmental form. No, no, there isn't. And it's, at, it's that way by design, right? I, I wrote a book about this a few years ago, and I called it Bitcoin and the Future of Money. And the reason I, I, I named it that is because what's important here is not just this experiment. It's that this experiment has shown us that it's possible to create an independent currency. It's possible to try to create something that could compete with government-backed currency. It's possible to create a system that 
uh, uh, the engine of Bitcoin called the blockchain that can track things in a very unique way. And so there are uses there. And this is this is what really gets me when I hear people that want to invest in this that don't understand it and just want to jump in on the upswing. They call it an asset. Is it an asset? I mean, gold is an asset. Oil is an asset. There are uses for these things. But the use of Bitcoin from the beginning has been as a currency. But well, let's check that for a second. Because if it's useful as a currency and the price keeps going up, you don't want to spend a Bitcoin. Because if you buy something today and you wait tomorrow, you'll find out that, wait a minute, I could have waited one more day and used less of my Bitcoin. So there's a sort of deflationary pressure here. Yeah. And that's the problem. If it's not really a currency and it's not really an asset, then what is it? It's a bunch of people who want to jump in to catch it on the upswing, and a lot of people are going to get hurt. And I've got to clarify here, Bitcoin is a really interesting experiment, and people should pay attention because it says a lot about the future of money and a lot about interesting technology, but it is a dangerous way to put your money into the, into the market. That